Hello everyone. Here I am with yet another addition to the removable prosthodontic series, which is my attempt to break the monotony of the lockdown we all are in. This time I bring in a solution for the maxillary complete denture. Another perplexing question with this denture is till where do I extend the border posteriorly? Take a look at this edentulous denture based foundation. When we look at it from the top, we can see a stark difference in color between the tissues of the hard and soft palate. The tissues on the hard palate are firmly adherent to the underlying bone, whereas that's not the case with soft palate. If you ask the patient to say the word ah in short vigorous outbursts, you will notice areas of marked displacement of tissues and areas of quivers, that's shallow displacement. If one tries to trace it, it forms a line in a curved fashion and not a straight one. If we were to make it coincide with our denture border, it would be the posterior limit of the denture. Hence, we need to place it wisely with some knowledge. This particular line is also called as the posterior vibrating line or the ah line. In reality, an area rather than a line needs to be recorded and replicated into the denture base. And hence, the topic of my presentation today is the posterior palatal seal area or the PPS as we commonly call it. Hi, my name is Dr. Amit Sadhwani. I'm a prosthodontist from Mumbai, India. The question is, why would one want to seal the area? Wouldn't a mere extension suffice? The reason to create a seal is to resist the displacement of upper denture in function. It helps the denture resist horizontal and lateral torquing forces. So how would one develop a seal? The answer is a mild compression on predetermined resilient tissues. These tissues are within the confines of a definitive anatomic and physiologic boundaries. There are dentures where a bead-like elevation is thought to create a positive contact. But no, my dear friends, it may cause irritation and other complexities in the longer run. It would make the patient devoid of a better, a more comfortable seal on the denture border. The R line can be further explained by understanding the clinical junction between hard and soft palates. A cross section through the two palates clarifies this idea further. The clinical junction is an apt term used here, which signifies the junction between firmly adherent tissues of hard palate and those tissues which are not supported by bone. The change in color described earlier starts from here. Fovea palatini or openings for the mucus glands which are situated in the midline claim to be a landmark for the location of vibrating line but is not a reliable feature. There is documentation with respect to it. A few millimeters ahead of it is the R line. We spoke about the clinical junction of the hard and soft palates but it is where the two meet anatomically. It lies close to the posterior nasal spine and is actually beyond our boundary of interest. Let's check out the PPS clinically. We discussed about the posterior vibrating line before. Added to it is the anterior vibrating line. The dimensions of PPS are not constant throughout. The midline has the least amount of compressible tissues, whereas areas lateral to it fan out in width and depth. Considering these variations in dimensions, the two vibrating lines are placed in the form of a bow called as Cupid's bow. This extends from one tuberosity to another. Another crucial factor added to the PPS is the pterygomaxillary seal on either side, location of which is in the pterygomaxillary notch and continues about 3 to 4 millimeters anterolaterally this area marks the seal complete and it is very crucial. There are hard palates which are flat. This feature increases the width of the PPS anteroposteriorly, which may aid in better retention of the denture. 
the soft palate in this case is nearly confluent with the hard palate or is at a very shallow angle. There are scenarios where the posterior vibrating line is highly curved and the PPS may be close to a thin line rather than a broad area. Seen typically in palatal walls which are deeper than usual. Appropriately locating PPS here is crucial to the success of the denture. The soft palate too drops down acutely in these cases unlike others. Let's have a look at how we trace the PPS clinically. A tea burnisher can be used to locate the pterygomaxillary notch bilaterally. As we move towards the midline, a dip between firm and resilient tissues can be felt with the end of the burnisher. The compressible tissues are broader here. While closer to the midline, the compressible tissues become very thin or non-existent. Imagine another instance where the compressible tissues sometimes become more visually easy to locate due to the immediate difference in color. Have a look at this picture. With the procedures described above, one can locate the PPS and mark it with a hematoxylin pencil. After replacing the already made impression, the marking can be transferred. Like here, it is recorded during the primary impression itself. There are many advantages in appreciating the PPS right in the diagnostic stage like stating the prognosis of the upper denture to the patient and fabrication of a perfect custom tray. Doesn't matter if the impression is made in medium fusing impression compound or alginate. Your impression should have its record. I would prefer having the whole area covered with ink rather than a single line as it would help me fabricate a custom tray without any spacer wax in that particular region. Here are the steps which lead you to your first acquaintance with the CV. Markers used intraorally may look smudged on the primary impression. It needs to be carefully refined. Care should be taken to maintain the boundary of your impression a few millimeters beyond the posterior vibrating line. A common mistake is over shortening the extent of the denture. Knowledge of the palatal anatomy is essential. Like in a flatter palate, one would expect a more flatter posterior extent. But a mistake like this can make the patient devoid of full retention. So let's take a look at the flow in various stages. Starting with the PI where the PPS is marked to the acrylic custom tray where the PPS region is inherently made more compressible towards the tissues. Low fusing impression compound is added to the region. Care is taken to avoid any butt joint or a step near the anterior vibrating line and a smooth transition is preferred. The wash impression material be it ZOE paste or elastomeric material should nearly expose the underlying compound to assure firm positive contact while seating. Already establishing the seal also helps prevent the excessive flow of wash material into the throat while making the impression. An effective way to record the PPS during the final impression stage is to ask the patient to bend the head down at 30 degrees to the horizontal. This is technically at an angle to the Frankfurt horizontal plane, use of a protractor might aid the operator to achieve the patient position. That's another final impression made through the similar technique for you. Another variant in recording the PPS during the final impression stage is making the use of a soft putty or heavy body in a single step molding protocol. An inherent disadvantage here is less retention due to the nature of the material when compared with compound. Scraping the posterior region or after an adhesive application and subsequently layering it with something called as fluid wax might be a good alternative. But it is a time consuming procedure and requires elaborate armament. Pterygomaxillary seal can be appreciated well in this impression 
as it gradually merges anterolaterally to the mucogingival junctions ahead. Sometimes it may not be symmetrical owing to the size of tuberosities on either side. Another way of creating the seal is scraping the master cast. I wouldn't recommend scraping it arbitrarily, but it has to be a systematic approach. Locating the two vibrating lines carefully is even more crucial when the trial record base is found to be lacking retention. Marking it in the patient's mouth, rechecking, transferring it to the record base and eventually onto the cast needs to be carefully repeated. The scraping should not be like a step at the borders but should flow gradually. One of the inherent disadvantages of the procedure is an overzealous approach leading to over post damming. At the end of the day, the posterior palatal seal area imparts a sense of psychological advantage both to the patient and the operator. It can be a factor which can make or break your complete denture practice. Every effort throughout the various stages should be made to achieve optimum advantages of PPS for the maxillary complete denture. Like always, if you have learned something new and enjoyed the presentation, do give it a thumbs up, share with your colleagues and subscribe to my YouTube channel named Dr. Amit Sadhwani, MDS Prosthodontics. See you soon. Until then, stay indoors, stay safe and stay secure.